oh, I had to really start coming back. As I said, we were extremely poor, but my mother was, um, was one of those women who really wanted to go places and do things, although she only had an eighth grade education, but we saw that. Mm -hmm. So all of my sisters are like, you know, go for it, that kind of thing. And I had to really work on that so that I would not damage my marriage. Mm -hmm. Because the way I was, it was really damaging. Mm -hmm. Because I was putting Randall in an awkward, awkward situation mm -hmm. of my teaching him how to do all these things that his mother didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was it was a real problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, want, I, want to mention, I want to mention two things. One thing I want to go back to the next standards. Another word besides standard, and one is the truth. Then I want to say something about how, a little bit about my background and regards to growing up, and no offense, how I really felt about women. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the movie uh, with uh, Jack Nicholson in, and, and uh, Tom, uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. And he yells out, uh, uh, You want the you truth? Can't you can't it. handle the truth. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody else the point I'm making is mm -hmm. we, even in marriage, relationships, everything. You must focus on the truth. I know what the world is thinking today. I know how the world, we was talking about earlier about tolerance and this and that and compromise. And believe it or not, y'all don't hate on this. So you can't tell church now from the club. You can't tell anything. Everything's just nuts right now. You know what I mean? We used to like, we used to have our kids look up to the president. You know, I'm just saying everything's, Totally whacked out. Make a point to this nigga. You, we must make a decision and say, first, can I handle the truth? Can I handle the truth of the fact that what marriage is supposed to stand for? Can I handle the truth of what a husband is supposed to be? Whether you make less or more than she makes. You know? Can I handle the truth even though I had no male images, what the truth is about being a father? What can am I going to be truthful? Let me give you this example. When I grew up, I grew up in a single parent home. I love my mother. <clears throat> but I remember when my mother would get off work and uh, we were here, because she, she uh, didn't drive because they tried to teach her how to drive, but she destroyed vehicles. Like, I can't tell. <laughs> so she didn't drive. So she caught a cab all the time. But when that cab door slammed, everything in our house scattered like mice. My stepfather had a little spot he would sit at by the uh, by the uh, refrigerator, by, by the uh, freezer. Bob would sit right there. And everything, we didn't know what my mom was. The point I'm making is, once I got married to this wonderful little nice lady, mm -hmm. and I had these little kids, these little kids, little boy, and it was, they were like little, I, I unlocked my door, I'd come home, and they'd run to me and scream. I had to train myself, even down to the fact I would, uh, she'd come home from work, I would stay upstairs, I had to mentally get myself, because I wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the baggage sometimes we bring into our marriage. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And gradually, as I told you, everything's in the Bible. Yeah. It says when I got saved, I had to start focusing on the fact that I am a new creature in Christ. Yeah. Old things are passed. I was just talking to my son. I always thought I'd be the father of girls, first off. <laughs> you know, raising boys. Three boys. Yeah. <laughs> Men are not easy sometimes to, uh, to raise. And I thank God for what we had put into our son. Even though I did not even know my own father, if you put a gun to my head today and ask me to describe my father, whose real name is Sidney Shannon, which is a whole different story how I changed, had to buy my name in downtown New Brunswick. The point I'm making is I could not describe him. So I had no possible aroma, so I would snatch any little thing I got to figure out how men are supposed to operate. And you've done a great job. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and Randall mentioning that, in that handout that you're going to get, there's breaking the family curses in there. And we did a, we, we, we also have some YouTube channels, so we did uh, some segments, a three-part segment actually mm -hmm. on breaking the family curse. And we did it at our family reunion down south last year. Uh, but the first step it says here, you need to identify, when we've taught the marriage classes, something we've said to the couples is that <laughs> It's not just your immediate family. Remember I told you my parents were married for almost 53 years before daddy died. Mm -hmm. So there was no divorce there. 13 children. There are a number of my siblings who have children who have never been married. One of my sisters has been married four times. 
one of my sisters has been married three times, twice to the same man. I said, I don't know how she got him to do that, but she did. <laughs> so now she's getting all of it. He died, and now she's getting all of his stuff. But at any rate, so, <laughs> yes, she even got something she didn't know was coming. But at any rate, so you have to look in your lineage. What is in your background? We love our parents, love uncle, aunt, whomever. Look in your background, and Randall said the truth. The truth. It's the truth. The Bible says the truth yes. makes us free. Yes. So you have to look at it, you know, uh, and when I tell my students, you know, we do these articles on alcohol and whatever the kids are doing these days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never had a drink of anything stronger than coffee or tea. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're like, really? Mm -hmm. Not even sangria? Mm -hmm. And I say, like, what's sangria? And they laugh. <laughs> so, but I know that there's a propensity for alcoholism. There's a propensity for addiction on both sides. Mm -hmm. My mother had these nice, handsome brothers, articulate, but some of them were functioning alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Went to work, mm -hmm. functioning alcoholics. Some of my own siblings have gotten in trouble because of alcohol and addiction. And it's like, you know, I know the potential is there. Mm -hmm. It's in the generation, mm -hmm. it's in the lineage. Why do I need to try it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do Not that. Exactly. I know the put um, and now I was addicted to something for one for a while and that was sugar. And I have an article on that and LinkedIn as well. <laughs> it's called Addicted and Still Working in the Church. You have to read it. Mm -hmm. Addicted and Still Working in the Church. How I binged and purged mm -hmm. using laxatives and over so, you know, we talk about addiction. There are all kinds of things, mm -hmm. and that can affect the marriage. So you need to identify those curses and generational sins, identify them, confess them, receive God's grace, and start a new legacy. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I had to do that in my marriage because I was like all that. I was, I was it. Mm -hmm. I was okay. So we have to really look at ourselves. Another article that I wrote is Michael Jackson's advice for a successful marriage. You know what it is? The man in the mirror. Oh. I, I, 